were in the middle of a clean food revolution. Corgetti spaghetti, cauliflower rice, quinoa, the mighty kale. We can't get enough. Or can we? A totally different food phenomenon is taking over in the high street. And you can't see much of the corgetti here. This is where you'll find lots of curry, chips, crispy duck, pizza, fried rice, sweet and sour pork, chocolate fountains. There is so much. Hundreds of all-you-can-eat restaurants are opening every year, with one chain opening a new branch every single week. More chicken tikka, please. More chicken tikka. It's not just a meal. Ugh. It's an entire experience. Please make some noise! <laughs> so stuff your lentils, your wheatgrass and couscous. The fad diet Britain really loves is beating the buffet. Because I'm British, we never give up. They always come in with a mission. I'm going to eat the house down. Welcome to the mouth-watering world of the all-you-can-eat. Uh. We Brits spend an average of over four grand a year on dining out. But a beating out used to be for rich people, celebrities, and anyone who couldn't stand being around their own family. Now everybody wants to get stuck in. If you look at dining now, it's much more experiential. So besides great quality food, people are looking for experiences. Once, a birthday blowout meant a trip to the Trattoria, bring your own cake and candles, and pray the waiter didn't sing. But now, well now, we want the world. And we can have it, as all you can eat restaurants offer all the food on earth. And all under one roof. Look at that. I know, but I have to... On it. To pace myself. No. At Flames World Buffet in Worcester, you can get 50 different meals for less than seven quid. Leicester, the culinary town best known for its crisps, now offers Moore's Live Social Dining Theatre that actually encourages you to stuff your faces. Eat more, live more, love more. Go do it, guys. Even the Chinese buffet in St. Helens is in on the act. You can visit the food as many times as you like. Offering limitless sweet and sour chicken, pork spur ribs and that well-known Chinese delicacy, pizza. Nice. I mean, this isn't the world we want our children to grow up in. Then what the hell is? Here you go, guys. Would you like some lolly? Only one. <laughs> but for every customer, happy to enjoy a nice gentle meal and go home. Oh, Table for two, please. Yes, please, yeah. There are those who really want to show the buffet who's boss. This is Chris. He's an absolute buffet monster. As far as I'm concerned, there's only one type of restaurant. It is the eat all you can buffet. You getting a drink? I think, really, we're going to eat, we're, we're here to eat, aren't we? We're going for a drink later. Like so. I like to make sure I'm full up, and I like value for money, I like variety. Combine all three and just go to an eat all you can. To make sure customers like this can stuff their faces, across their ten branches, the Chinese buffet kitchen is primed to serve a gut busting two tons of food every night. So, this is the central production kitchen. Over here, we have the crispy chicken being made in the large pots. Crispy chicken, we'll do about half a ton a week across the branches, and it's the alternative to the crispy duck, where we do about one and a half tons in a week. Think of it like Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory, but with pork balls. And no Willy. This is a family show. Moving along, our sweet and sour sauce is a bit more popular than the other sauces. And we do it in the region of eight to 900 litres of sweet and sour sauce per week for the 10 branches. Here we have the chicken being produced. At the moment, the guys, they're making a skewered chicken, which are the ones on the sticks. It's chicken breast per week, we go to about four tonnes. It's bad news for poultry. That's about 2,700 chickens every week. We probably use in the region about 15,000 of these eggs per week across 10 branches. And of course, it is the Chinese buffet and it is a Chinese cuisine, so if we move on to rice, the most famous of all, your average car at home weighs about one and a half tonnes. So if you put two cars next to each other on a scale, that's how much rice we'll sell in a week across 10 branches. With streams of customers paying 15 quid per head for limitless meals, this one branch can bring in up to 12 grand a night just on food. 
Let's go. Let's the battle commence. Oh, there's too much choice. It's better to look round and the see whole place is. first. Chris has two hours of solid eating ahead of him, and he's got a whole game plan to help him fill his face. Look at that. That's heaven oh. on a plate. You take an initial sweep of the area, because you wouldn't want to commit to something without taking a full sweep. Because you might commit to load of beef or load of chicken, and round the corner, they've got more expensive food. So it's tactical. Tactics, Chris. Nice. The choice in here is amazing. I'll catch up with you soon. All right, mate. But the restaurants also have a few tricks of their own. Every all you can eat has a selection of foods cunningly placed to fill you up quickly. There are people who just go for the noodles and nothing else. So therefore, that's where our profit goes up. But a restaurant can't just serve noodles and rice. That'd be madness. So hidden amongst the basics is the really good stuff. Look at that. Oh, one of the most expensive item within our branch would be seafood, such as king prawns, fresh salmon, which is very nice. We have uh, squid, which is at the Tippinyaki as well. And an expert customer like Chris knows exactly what he's looking for. Oh my pizza. God, you've got roast duck here. Breasts, look at the breast on that. Oh my God, this is like paradise. Only a paradise is refilling the crispy duck tray every 40 minutes, Chris. Oh my God, look at this glistening duck breast. That is marvellous. Mm. What's the evening buffet price? 14 quid, is it? Whatever it is, if you went to a normal Chinese and all of this individually, we've already made our money back. All right then. Are you getting more savoury? Oh, yeah. I am not finished with a savoury yet. 45 minutes in, and Chris has eaten four plates worth of food. It's a good start, Chris, but you ain't seen nothing yet. I would say nine times out of ten, yeah, I, I, I beat the buffet. Let's give that ten, maybe. <laughs> George is an all-you-can-eat veteran. I've been uh, banned from one and literally banned for nothing for just doing my normal thing, going into an all-you-can-eat, um, and as advertised, having as much as I liked, which at the day wasn't a lot. Um, five small bowls. Lightweight. That's just a snack. George has come to Leicester, to Moore's World Dining Experience, and has opted for the 11.99 early evening sitting. Now he's on a mission to beat the buffet. I would say at this particular time, I'm feeling, you know, uh, fairly hungry, so I'd say, yeah, be scared, be scared. I'm coming in, I'm a new customer, and um, you're advertising all you can eat, and uh, I'm Mr. All You Can Eat, so, uh, yeah, bring it on. Tasked with taming this eating machine is Orna Minaj. Hello there. Welcome to more. Ah, thank Have you. Have you been before? Uh, no, I haven't, no. Let me take you to the table. OK. So we'll take it from there. All oh, right, fantastic. In a better world, Minaj have his own national holiday. It's about eat more, live more, love more, be more, try more, enjoy more, more fun, more friends, more family, and eventually more than enough. Hallelujah. Most of our food is cooked freshly in front of you. OK. You've got about 50 dishes to choose from. Wow. If you take one scoop of each, you'll look like me. OK. <laughs> Fantastic. I mean, you're looking, you're looking good. Looking good. Nice and strong. You can come again, sir. <laughs> and now, as you've seen plenty of punters like George before, and he's got a whole kitchen full of tricks up his sleeve. I don't waste any time worrying about big eaters. We want our guests to eat more. They spend time eating in here, they'll drink as well. It's one of the key things in the buffet that you try and sell a drink. It's not a trade secret, everybody knows that in a restaurant, the margins in the drink are far better than the margin in the food. A glass of Coke costs the restaurant about 15 pence, but they can sell it for a couple of quid. So all Minaj has to do is flog George a few bevies and his quids in. Minaj, do your thing. What would you like to drink? I would just start off with a glass of water, please. Just some... Um, Lovely. With, ..with no ice. Enjoy. The drink will be here shortly. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Well, that didn't exactly go to plan. George is a pro, and it turns out he's got Minaj's number. The restaurant really wants you to fill up on pasta dishes and things like that. When I see somebody just filling up their plate with, with rice and pasta, I do think to myself, you're playing into the restaurateur's hands. 
There is so much. It can be like a, uh, a big boxing match. Mm. The gloves are off, my fork's in hand, and I'm, uh, I'm ready to go all the way. The super heavyweight contest is on. It's ginormous George versus manager Menage. The average guest will eat four plates of food. The most I've seen anybody eat is eight solid plates of food. Mm. An average starter plate will cost us, for raw material, about £1.30 a plate. Thanks very much. That's great. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. A main plate will cost about £1.10, £1.15. I can see this. What was this? If you're going for lots of their expensive items, chicken, beef, I can imagine they're going to be sweating and watching and alarm bells are going to be ringing. Mm. George has come out fighting, sticking to what he knows. He's soon on his fourth plate of chicken tikka. If I sit here too long, relax, drink loads of water, you know, I'm going to start to feel uh, full very, very quickly. So get the food down, get up there, get some more, get up there, get some more. It's probably a bit like uh, a man at the blackjack table in the casino. Um, when he starts to win and win and win, suddenly, you know, the security start uh, twitching and, and most certainly the owners are uh, borderline having a heart attack. Seconds out and plate five. And George has already eaten almost two whole chickens. What I'm doing here, just breaking this chicken up, and basically um, it saves me chewing so much. George has really come out swinging, even if he can't be bothered chewing. Either way, he's got all the menage on the ropes. When the guests eat around seven plates, I'm in trouble. We Brits love our food like a fat kid loves, well, food. And now there is a world of restaurants which say no to fasting diets and high intensity interval training, in favor of high intensity fat eating with no intervals. How many nuggets and onion rings are you going to eat? As a nation, we are flocking to the all-you-can-eat restaurants, convinced we can eat our money's worth. And then some more. I've got more duck than I can get on the pancakes, I think. Is it wrong if I say I'm a little bit full already? <laughs> no, literally, they're perfect customer. But if all-you-can-eat restaurants are booming... Do you want some more noodles? No, I'm OK, <laughs> then they must have a few tricks up their sleeves to beat us at our own game. If you're with Ripon, come on over to the back of the restaurant. And at most restaurants, Ona Menage is about to deliver a masterclass. It's quarter to eight, it's Saturday night, it's getting really busy now. We've got about 150 children, youngsters, and lots of parents and adults with them. Kids love a buffet restaurant. It's like being let loose in a sweet shop but with extra chips on the side. We welcome them. We love them because where children go, parents follow. And the mums and dads love it because the adorable little gluttons seem to be getting a bargain. Oh, yes, look, Jacob's well under the line. Come on over here. You eat for half price, young man. But once again, the all-you-can-eats are one step ahead. Because even at half price, the restaurants know they can make a killing. Get them to make more chips than that. Yeah. Tell Chef Chips. Ten minutes in and the kitchen is rushed off its feet. A couple of uh, creaks happening here and there. Uh, the most interesting one is, guess what we just ran out of? And we had to top up twice. Tomato ketchup. Because all the youngsters are having chips with ketchup. As much as we're saying, try all the other dishes, they all love their chips. There is nothing worse than running out of ketchup. Well, except maybe Ward and Jeremy Clarkson. But still, it's bad. Oh, gosh. Hey, chef, Senna, ketchup, please. Although for Menage, there is a plus sign. Fantastic, thank you, buddy. Can we also put some next to the chips? Empty ketchup bowls mean the kids are stuffing themselves with these most profitable items because chips are cheap, literally. Cheap as chips. And when they're not eating chips, the kids are eating another high-profit item, pizza. Kids, what are you doing? A margarita pizza costs about 15p a slice to make. Well, 15p and the heartfelt passion of a good cook. But still, it's cheap. And as the kids have had their fill of pizza and chips, Menage is standing by with the next cheap and cheerful item. 
And we know the next big rush is going to come from waffles. So we're, we're just making sure we're ready for that. Menage the waffle in them. It's not just kids who can be tempted by a less expensive club. Back in St. Helens. Two Pepsis, no ice. Manager David is watching a grown man make the mistakes so many made. A siren calling him onto the rocks, covered in crispy seaweed. Oh, my God, look at the amount of seaweed. What is crispy seaweed? Is it seaweed from yeah. the sea? My guilty pleasure, and eat all you can, is seaweed. I could eat it like cereal. I, I, I build it up like a sand castle of seaweed. Oh. I don't know about you, but as you probably noticed from my plate, I like an eat-all-you-can buffet, but I think that they should rename buffets to eat all the seaweed you can. Yeah, it's quite niche, Chris. It's also music to our buffet manager, David's ears. This is our seaweed which we offer to the customers. Per week, the chef have to make one and a half of this size buckets. To be honest, this is a bit of a secret, but it's actually cabbage. And then what they need to do, they need to finely chop it and then deep fry, season. Seaweed, or as it turns out, fried cabbage, is one of the cheapest items on David's menu. And so-called buffet master Chris has fallen for it. If you stop and relax, it's game over. You've almost got to keep it going, keep it going, keep eating. So how is it then, gentlemen? Oh, I'll tell you what, going good. it's left me a bit, um, a bit hungry. Peckish. <laughs> Stuffing himself with seaweed means that Chris has left no room for one of the most valuable items on the menu. The aromatic crispy duck, you'll be quite surprised to hear this, per day, the customers can eat up to 20 crispy ducks. Across his 10 branches, the restaurant gets through five tonnes of duck every week. That's 2,500 ducks fried in over 20,000 litres of oil. Poor Donald. Costing three times more than chicken, it's one of the most expensive items on the menu. So the Chinese buffet has come up with a cunning way to stop people from eating too much and keep down the uh, <coughs> duck bill. Where you place the food is very important. What we have done with the crispy duck, we have decided to put it by the open kitchen. At the same time, when we do this, we have reduced the consumption of the food because people do not just pile up on the plate. Nobody wants to look greedy in front of the chefs, not even in an all-you-can-eat restaurant. They might feel a bit embarrassed if they pile up on the plate if the chef is sitting, uh, standing next to them. Either way, bagging onto Chris has ducked out. But has he got his money's worth? There comes a point when the fun ends and the pain sets in. Well, he and Pete have polished off a total of nine plates between them. But on food alone, they've eaten just under the cost of one 14 99 buffet meal. It's funny, isn't it, how when you come in here, you have aspirations and hopes to eat all that food. And when you leave, you don't ever want to look at it again. Once again, David and the Chinese buffet have seen off the challenges. Pub. Let's go. go. Our eyes are always bigger than our belly. Therefore, you go in attack and you have a mountain fall. By a second plate, I'm sorry I'm stuffed. And that's what always happens. But then they never learn because they come here 10 times and they still do the 10 times the same. Now, get a beer inside you, Chris. Remember George, who rocked up at Moore's in Leicester and looked like cleaning out Menage completely? Well, he's still going. I've had relationships last less time than these two have been together. Hi, George. How are you getting on? I'm, I'm getting on, uh, yeah, great, yeah. I'm eating you at a profit yet, yeah, or...? Um... You've got a long way to go. <laughs> really? That is the laugh of a man who hopes that George chokes on a bolty. This battle of giants is still on. George was banned by his local all-you-can-eat and is now on to his sixth plate of chicken tikka. I think I've had a fair bit, of, fair bit of chicken. Now, if you'd have had the lamb, yeah. I'd have been in trouble. Oh, really? I'm still going? Yes. Seconds out. Again. Plate six. Aiming for around about 10. 10 or 12, but maybe more. In an average week, the restaurant could get through up to 100 kilos of chicken tikka. 
and 135 litres of tikka masala sauce. That's 116 chickens, 12 litres of cream, over 200 tins of tomatoes and nearly two kilos of chopped chillies. Or, as George calls it, a snack. It's good stuff, yeah. Really good, yeah. Menage has set the restaurant's price based on customers eating less than seven plates. Yes, there is a risk, uh, and you have to calculate everything. Ooh. Beautiful. The perfect customer for me would be the one that comes in, spends an hour and a half here, enjoys their meal, has about three plates of food, lots and lots to drink, and off they go. It's a gamble, because anyone eating more than seven plates will literally eat into his profit. When somebody comes in uh, looking to eat as much as they can, and it's a bit of a mission, a bit of a game, and you can tell, and it's usually the youngsters these days, when the concept first opened, uh, it was quite popular. Tackling the lamb, try and get a last bit of lamb in. The walls of my stomach now are starting to stretch. Hopefully, I'll get another plate in, but, but who knows at the end of this one. George has already stuffed himself with almost two whole chickens. Now he's getting the meat sweats. You know, I don't want to make myself sick. After seven plates of curried lamb and chicken tikka... Hey, hey, hey. Mr All You Can Eat has found he can eat no more. I think I've had a lot. It's a good effort and close to Moore's all-time record. The most I've seen anybody eat is eight solid plates of food. George has polished off all this and for just £12. Seven plates, and I think I've definitely beat the buffet. But has he dealt Menage a knockout blow? Uh-uh. He did not beat the buffet. He did just over seven plates, and that's about my break-even point here. And they weren't full plates. So whilst he was sort of uh, pretending to eat lots of plates of food, they weren't even full. So Tactical Chris and Buffet Buster George have both failed to break even. But hang on. At the Chinese buffet in St. Helens, the kids are about to strike gold. Brown gold. They've hit the sweet spot. Everyone loves a chocolate fountain. People are fascinated by it. Adults, kids love it. It's also one of the most expensive items in the entire restaurant. Per day, we can use up to eight bags of these chocolate pellets. It costs £15 a bag. So per day, we can go through a hundred and twenty pound worth of chocolate on our chocolate fountain. So if you ever think you're eating too much chocolate, remember that these guys spend up to 44 grand a year on it. It's also where you stand the best chance of beating the buffet. Let's be honest, all this talk of healthy eating, balanced diets and portion control is enough to make you sick. Face facts or anecdotal evidence, the spiralizer and the Nutribullet are gathering dust in the cupboard, aren't they? What you really want is to get stuck into the all you can eat. He's walking around with two plates at a time. Fantastic. These restaurants are set up to make money from even the greediest punters. But pay attention, because we're learning some important tricks here for when you next eat your local buffet. First, avoid the cheap foods and go straight for the good stuff. Second, drinking is for mugs or glasses. Either way, it's a mistake. Thirdly, hit the chocolate fountain hard. That's where you'll get your money back. But they're hoping you'll be too full by the time you get there. I might have to take my belt off, you know. <laughs> In this battle of the buffet, the restaurants seem to have all the trump cards. But there are some big guns out there. Time to send in the heavy artillery. Start making everything. It's lunchtime in Flames World Buffet in Worcester. And these strapping lads are on a mission. The challenge today is who can eat the most plates of food in an hour. I'm, I'm pretty confident we've got some big lads on this team, so we should do well. Big lads? You're telling me. These are my kind of sportsmen, and they've just touched down at Flames Buffet, which is run by manager Lehman. I'll just set up the table for you in literally one minute. And head chef Pramod. How long for the bacon? Two minutes, your two minutes or my two minutes? Like all top athletes, these boys have to be very selective in what they eat. 
So like you do, they've selected the full English breakfast section. Can we have more sausages, please? More sausages, quickly. We're running out, so one more batch should be coming out in a bit. We're 11 minutes in, guys. These boys know the importance of a balanced diet. So having wiped out the full English, and now moving on to an even fuller Chinese. Sweet and sour chicken, please. Sweet and sour chicken. Any dish, we can pick it up in five minutes' time. And then we know when it's less than half, we start making it. While the bombers launch another offensive... Kaboom! There's a new guy on the scene who eats for a living. I like to think I'm the biggest eater in the UK. I recently uh, got back from representing the British team at the, the Battle of Big Eaters World Championship uh, and of the four-person team, I ate the most. I tried to eat 25 Big Macs from McDonald's one time uh, and got through like, 17 or 18. I'd have checked his beard. Britain's number one eater. He could hide a couple of quarter pounders in there easy. <laughs> Sit down, go on. Oh, okay. Adam has come to Huckleberry's, an American diner in Yorkshire. But if there's one thing our friends in the US are good at, it's eating. Drinking, rubbish. But eating, phenomenal. And now they've brought a very particular type of restaurant to our shows. How are we doing, boys? We're nearly ready. Um, We've got some very fun. eager competitors. Two minutes. Huckleberry's is one of Britain's first food challenge restaurants, where for up to 35 quid, punters can test themselves against ridiculous quantities of food. When we first started two years ago, there was nothing else like us at all, was there? No. The market has changed so much that literally everywhere is doing this kind of thing now. Realising our love of stuffing our faces, John and Sarah have set up a restaurant where if you're tough, hungry or criminally insane enough, you can take on the burger apocalypse, weighing as much as 20 quarter pound burgers. Looks good. Our USP is obviously the challenges. Running at any one time, we've probably got eight or nine that we have on the menu. But it's everyone else that comes with them. People love it. Everyone gets up to take a photo of somebody doing it, making a fool of themselves as well. Making an event, innit? Yeah, we make it an experience rather than just having a meal. Huckleberry's latest challenge is the toughest yet. Man versus dog. That's your second one? Yeah, thanks. And Adam has challenged Donna John to give it a go. Oh my God. One hour, three, two, one, go. For 20 quid, it's like eating four days' worth of breakfast, lunch and dinner in just one hour, through the medium of hot dog. Oh. The man versus dog challenge, which is the four feet of hot dogs, has in it two pounds of bread, four pounds of hot dog sausage, four pounds of beef chilli, and also a pound of cheese grated on the top of it. It weighed in it just over £10. If Adam succeeds in the man versus dog challenge, he'll have eaten the equivalent of an actual Yorkshire Terrier. <laughs> Nearly 15 minutes in, boys. Still feeling confident, Adam? It's tough, the chilli's making it hard. Oh, look at all that cheese, man. Salad, that wasn't part of the deal. With all the John dropping out, Adam is left to go it alone. Oh. Adam may think he's getting close to beating Huckleberry's challenge, but in fact he's doing them a favour. Not only does Adam's plate give other customers something to point and laugh at, it's also great for marketing, where Huckleberry's uploads pictures to the internet for everybody else to point and laugh at. When the challenge comes out to start with, we'll take the photo, um, and then that photo will get uploaded onto our Facebook page. Our Facebook has 50,000 followers, and we had 500,000 people that had seen a, one post that we put on, which is huge for a little place in the, literally in the middle of nowhere. I don't want it, no. <laughs> I don't want it anymore. He's failed it four times already. I've never seen him struggle with any challenge as much as this. I hate this one, man. This is like the worst eating challenge in the world. You've got to give it to Adam. He's trying everything. Mushing the bread into water hasn't worked. Have some more chocolate milk right there. So now he's trying to wash it down with a 900 calorie milkshake. You've got to keep going. Come on, Adam. You've got a fistful left. Come on, Adam. Come on. Adam, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Record 54 minutes. Quick, somebody check his beard. I feel uh, pretty good that uh, I defeated probably the hardest eating challenge in the country. But at the same time, I feel like I'm going to give birth to a car. While Adam sorts his transport home, the restaurant is already one step ahead. If they complete it, they win in the voucher. cost of the challenge back in vouchers that they can use for anything. Oh, I think I need to go use the toilet. Another challenge, they can use it to be deducted off a bill for next time. Yep, that's right. Adam may think he's beaten the restaurant, but his prize for eating the vomit-inducing quantity of food is to come back and do it all again. Who's laughing now, Adam? Well done. You don't want to touch that. Just, just, just. Well done. If even a champion eater like Adam can't get one over on these cunning restaurants... I go home now. ..can anyone do better? Back at Flames, those finely tuned athletes are putting in a marathon effort. Except in a marathon, you don't want to lose weight. The calculated average for a plate of food, though, is about £1.44. pence. Hey, we're all five each. After five plates each, the bombers have almost eaten enough to cover the cost of the 7 95 lunchtime buffet. The way they're filling the crockery brings a whole new meaning to the phrase Super Bowl. It does look like they're quite hungry. Uh, I'm just watching that stack getting bigger and bigger. Guys, go for more chicken tikka, please. More chicken tikka. I'm slightly concerned at the moment, but nothing, nothing, too, nothing too bad. There you go, sir. No problem. Maybe these boys have found a way to beat the buffet after all. We've run out of plates now. Oh, yeah. I think everyone has at least gone uh, eight plates. Eight plates each? Yeah, eight plates each. I think these guys can eat. It looks like the bombers have blown flames away. Sometimes it can be like a battle uh, with customers. A lot of people come in with the intention of, you know, making their money's worth. Um, they'll come and eat as much as they can until they, the, the sob bloated, they can't actually move. After just one hour of concentrated eating, the nine bombers have eaten 65 plates between them. Yeah. Leaving flames with a loss of over 20 pounds. It's not an ideal situation for football teams to come like this and have as many plates. Well, I'll be counting my pennies tonight. So let's get this clear. Bearded wonder boy Adam has proven that he can eat more than you or I might get through in four days. Chunky athletes, the Lincolnshire Bombers, have shown that a buffet can be beaten at the cheapest times of the day. Yeah. So what if you put champion eater Adam in an all-you-can-eat? Surely you'd create the perfect storm. It's Saturday night. Adam's rocked up at the Chinese buffet and he's hungry. Hey Yo. How many is it called? One. And single, it seems. The average customer will eat about three plates of food. Good stuff. Very impressed. But Adam took the all-you-can-eat concept to a whole new level. You can use all-you-can-eat buffets or restaurants as a competitive eater to uh, very frugally train. Just basically you pay, you know, 10, 15 pounds and you know, all the food that's there is yours. Hey, it's coming, is it? Oh, my God. Uh -huh. I can get up to 20 plates quite easily. Manager David is used to big eaters. They always come in with a mission by saying, I'm going to eat as much as I can for that set price. I'm going to eat the house down, which means that I'm going to have 10 plates. I don't care if I'm sick afterwards. When I go to an all-you-can-eat, my tactics generally will be to take the light protein first, so chicken, fish, whatever it might be, and I'll avoid carbohydrates and really starchy things. Nice tactics, Adam. We're listening. After four or five plates, because they don't pace themselves, they will stop. They will literally cannot eat anymore. 
but Adam really can eat more. I've never seen someone that eats so much food. He's got like 10 plates on it. I really don't know where he put it. Adam may be skinnier than a french fry, but he's not letting that hold him back. Most people are shocked because of the size of me to see me eat so much. So I only weigh like 164 pounds right now. Sucking his fingers, noodles dropping down his face. If he eats like that in public, I was there at home. That's why I wonder. Little Minga. <laughs> so what he's doing here? He's literally shaking his body to help the food go down. It's like a digestive wiggle. This guy is a pro. He's aiming for the dessert and he's going for it. Oh, I bet his beard stinks. <laughs> Adam's polished off 21 plates of food and put away about 8,500 calories in one meal. So did you enjoy your dinner? That's the main thing. I really did. The food, food was really, really good. Have you, have you been here before? No, I've never been here. <laughs> You've done extremely well. Oh, I would say you're talking 40 pound. Uh, very easily. Got my money's worth then. Very, very easily. So next time, I'm afraid I have to charge you three times as much. <laughs> Adam may have a beard that smells of curry and hot dog. And he's probably not someone you'd want to get stuck in a lift with. But we finally found someone who can beat the buffet. Let's be honest. Every time we go to an all-you-can-eat restaurant, we go with just one thing in mind. To get maximum value for money. I can feel that you're going to eat, eat a lot, and you? <laughs> yeah, might be here all day. <laughs> we don't want to fall for the tactics like Chris and George. Oh, my God, look at the amount of seaweed. We don't want to stumble at the first hurdle like school kids. As much as we're saying, try all the other dishes, they all love their chips. We want to eat as much as we can and pay as little as possible. But in Moors, Someone has taken this goal one step too far and has tried to avoid paying anything at all. You came just now from the street. You went back to I knew that was going to happen, yeah. When everyone leaves the table, that's generally what it means that they're going to do a walkout. So, sadly, that's what it is. You can't run off without paying. It's not right. You need to go out and talk to them. They've left yes. without paying, the two ladies. And why? Who they were meeting? Uh, after, like, well, they were at 47, actually, behind yes. us. Yes, I saw the meeting. Yeah. yeah, a couple of girls came in to eat, and they didn't want to pay. The thing that annoys me most are people that try to fleece you. We have a policy on price, and they're trying to get something for nothing. Detective Minaj is on the case. Yep, definitely not there anymore. You, you can tell that there's lots of things that give away when somebody's going to actually try and slip out. But they'll disappear to the washroom, one will disappear somewhere else. Uh, things like that will happen. No buffet will survive if customers don't pay. That's just against the rules. We don't let it happen. We chase the people if we have to and bring them back in. Yeah, I won't call that chasing, Menage. But with the police involved, the customer suddenly has an attack of conscience. The lady would like to pay. And she's here. So, were you with the other girl? Yeah, yeah, she wanted £16. Yes. Yes, yeah, so there's you. I'll give her a five room one. Well done. I'm sorry, what's your name? Uh, no problem. Can I come your name? It's right, yeah. yeah. You know what, that's really honest of you. We weren't even finished, but I had about two, I had about two chicken nuggets. Oh, yeah. The old two chicken nuggets defence. Heard it before, love. An honest citizen? Maybe, maybe not. Do I believe her? I don't think she'd have paid one bit. Yes, why would they have run away? And why is the other girl run away not to pay? Simple, they didn't want to pay. It's only because we've made a first step return. Result. So, doing a runner isn't going to beat the buffet either. And anyway, that's cheating. But you know what? Even an all-you-can-eat has an Achilles heel. It's a Friday night and the full-fat gamble of the buffet concept is not paying off at Flames. My worst nightmare would be if there's no customers. Um, that, that's, that's just a disaster. The restaurant has to cook enough of their chicken tikka masala, prawn madras and vegetable bolte to tempt punters in. But if they don't turn up, the food is wasted. A lot of bookings didn't come today. That's the biggest problem. What's the number exactly? How many nooses you had? Around 40. 
40, with more than 40. Nobody called, no? No cancellation. No, 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 nothing. They just didn't show up, unfortunately. A night with no customers hits an all-you-can-eat twice as hard as a regular restaurant. And this is where their businesses are most vulnerable. Today, it's really a bad day for us. I haven't seen a Friday like this for a long time. We had a 40 no-shows, no people didn't turn up. Like if you see, there is a lot of food left out now. More than like half of the shipping dishes. So the cost is actually proportional. By looking at the amount of food which is left out, it's like, you know, at least 600 pounds. That's uh, the amount of food we're going to waste tonight, and which is a lot of money. I can't burn it. Look at all that tasty goodness, all going to waste. The most stressful thing isn't actually the fact that people are eating too much. It's, it's actually the waste. At the end of the night, having to throw away a, a bucket full of food, that's probably the most heartbreaking thing. Today we definitely didn't break even. It's a loss today. This can't be right. Do we really want to beat the buffets and put these places out of business? These restaurants are an oasis of happiness in a cruel, diet-obsessed world. Hey, oh, they're even attracting new customers who'd never normally visit an all-you-can-eat. I was classically trained in cordon bleu cookery, and I like to think of myself as a food expert. Believe it or not, this is Murdy's first ever trip to an all-you-can-eat. What happens? <laughs> oh, it looks busy. Yeah. I wouldn't go and eat in an all-you-could eat restaurant because I just don't think you would get the standard of food. I know lots of people like value for money and I know that they, you know, will probably pile their plates up and go back for seconds, thirds. To me, I think, you know, that's almost like gluttony and that sort of food that they're probably serving is probably only fit for pigs. Yeah, but sexy pigs though, like Miss Piggy or that one from Babe. Murdy clearly hasn't known the joys of combining chips, noodles and chicken curry, all on one plate. Should we go and see what they've got then? Yeah, let's go. The duck's all in there. That's duck. Oh, it looks a bit dried up. I don't think I'll be having that. Do you want to grab a plate while she's here? I haven't seen anything I like yet. <laughs> the way we uh, manage volume and ensuring that things don't run out uh, is little and often, little and often, little and often. Because if you cook too much of one thing, it takes longer to cook. So from the wok, there could be two chefs there. They can be cooking four dishes at the same time. Is it nice? Yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> See, to me, I'll be full after eating this. Well, I'm really surprised. I didn't think that the food would be as exciting as this. I was expecting it to be quite um, really, you know, run-of-the-mill stuff. It's nice that you can see him in the middle cooking as well. That's a bit different. This fussy eater seems to have seen the light. The type of restaurants I like are usually quiet and intimate. I tend not to like, you know, big noisy places with lots of people in them. I think it, you know, I need to concentrate on what I'm eating. <laughs> not here you don't. The joy of the all you can eat is that we don't have to make tough decisions, like whether to have a starter or a dessert or a, a side dish to go with the main course. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And at most, you can even combine the triple joy of big meals, low costs, and a disco. Tonight, if you feel like celebrating, please make some noise! It's a seductive threesome, a menage a trois, if you like. Because you know what? The secret of the all you can eat success is simple it's about getting enough of us through the door. This the whole concept is basically based on numbers. You need the volume through the door. Um, but the way I see it, the larger the restaurant, the more you can offer. The more you can offer, the more attractive it looks for customers. Just like a casino, if enough of us turn up, the restaurants will definitely make a profit. I don't waste any time worrying about big eaters because our philosophy is more. It's in the DNA of what we do. And sometimes you'll make a healthy margin from one guest and you'll make less from another. As long as the average of the week pans out to be a reasonably good margin, everyone's happy. It means we get to keep saying, stuff the diet, I'm going out. As it suggests, it's a buffet. 
and eat as much as you want. The restaurants know exactly what to give us. If you want to be wined and dined, that isn't what we do. It isn't what we're about. We don't tend to be like that. And most importantly, that the all you can eat are here to stay. Now get me out of here. I'm starving. Uh.